Hello and welcome to today's video. So today we are going to be doing another stash dive. This is kind of my version of Shop Your Stash where I pick five products from my collection that I want to use at least five times um, and then I'm going to share with you the five looks that I created with the palette and then share the next five products that I want to use. So these were the products that I selected for this current round. Um, first I'm going to be talking about these guys over here and then after that I will go into the palette and just let you know my thoughts about working with this palette, share the looks that I created and then we'll move on to um, the next five products that I want to use. As usual, here is my little tally sheet where I keep track of how many times I've used everything and I also like to keep track of what items I reach those five uses on first. I just find it really interesting to see what kind of products it's really easy to use um, for those five times or more and then what products might take a little bit longer. So as you can see, the first product that I reached the five uses on was the trio and that is this here it is the Tarte Hamptons Weekender contour palette um, and I just really enjoyed using this I found it really easy to grab for every time I did maybe not every time I did my makeup um, but most times that I did my makeup I found this really easy to grab for oftentimes I would blend these two shades here for kind of a bronzy blush I did reach into that a little bit for highlight I don't use powder highlight as often but I was at least able to reach for this palette quite a bit now I am going to add in here if you want to see swatches of any of these items and my reasoning behind choosing them I encourage you to go to the previous video at the end of that is where I explain that but for now, I'm just going to be talking about my experience using these. So I really enjoyed this. This is a nice little palette. I do like face palettes more than individual products when I can use all the shades in the palette. And I can with this, and it's a nice compact little size, so I quite enjoy this one. The next thing that I was able to reach five uses on was the Platinum um, Eyeliner over here from NYX. And as you can see, I was able to use this for eight total times. Once I found the best way to use this, this was a really easy product to kind of reach for and to incorporate into most looks. Now, I purchased this with the intention of using it primarily as um, a waterline pencil. I had seen Butte Bean use this in one of her looks and it just looked stunning on her. Um, it's just this really metallic silver. However, I don't know if it's because of just how, um, like the anatomy of my waterline, but with metallic shades, I find you don't see them, like I can see them on the waterline. So it's not that there isn't enough pigment in the product to show up. But just maybe the angle, like when you're looking straight on the angle of my waterline, um, metallic colors don't tend to show as much as matte shadows. So when I was incorporating this into eye looks on my waterline, I found that you weren't really noticing it. However, I found a really good way to use this with the looks that I created using the Moonspell palette was to use it as an inner corner highlight. Because it was a pencil and it's a very smooth, soft formula, I was very easily able to kind of place it directly in the inner corner and use it as a highlight or on my lower lash line for, you know, a little bit of an accent because the palette didn't really come with an inner corner shadow that I personally really, like, worked for me. So after I figured that out, after I figured out that this worked really well for an inner corner highlight, um, that's the way I used it and I was able to get to eight uses on this item. So the next item that I reached the uses on was the Moonspell palette, which we will talk about in just a moment. So then if we look at the next item, it's the lipstick from Shine by Estee. And while I didn't use this with every look, that wasn't my intention, I figured I wouldn't, I really did like how this went with the palette. It's got kind of a, like the Moonspell palette... I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a dramatic palette, and I think this is a little bit of a dramatic shade that kind of went well with it. It's a sheer brown base, and then I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of has a purpley blue sheen to it, which is more subtle on the lips than it shows in the tube. So I really enjoyed using this lipstick. You can see that I used it just the five times, which is fine for me. Now I am going to add here 
that if the effect of that lipstick is something that is intriguing to you, I recently found this lip gloss from the drugstore. It's from Essence. It's one of their Shine 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 glosses and it is in the shade for a night out. Um, and I don't know if you can see in the tube there that it is kind of a sheer warm tone with this one kind of has a purple shift to it. And on the lips it has somewhat of a similar effect to that lipstick. So when I was talking about that lipstick in the previous video, I had said that um, I couldn't find it on the Shine by SD website anymore. Uh, it might have been out of stock. Maybe it's there now. I haven't checked. But if the effect is something that, you know, interests you, the look of it, then maybe that lip gloss is something to check out. The final product that I reached the five uses on was the Hard Candy All Matte Up um, Lip Stain. This is more of a matte crayon than a lip stain. It is in kind of a cool mauve color. And the only reason it took me longer to um, reach the five uses on this is because I did have two lip products in this round. And so it really was, I had to wait till I had an eye look where this kind of cooler toned color um, suited it. Um, but yeah, it was, the, I like, I really like these crayons from Hard Candy and um, I enjoyed getting some more use out of this. And then finally, we have my bonus bright for this round, which is this teal a mascara, also from Hard Candy. The bonus bright that I pick for each round is just kind of a brighter um, colored item that I just want to use once because honestly, to, to pick an item that is, uh, has a lot of color to it, it's a little bit unrealistic for me to think I'm going to use them five times within one kind of cycle. So I just like picking kind of one brighter item that I want to use once. And for this round, it was this colored mascara. And I used it once and that made me happy. So now let's talk about the palette. So I received this palette as a gift last year um, in the fall time from my husband. And this was the first time that I was really able to kind of dive in and get to know all these shadows. I think I only used it once last year um, before we got into the months where I just wasn't wearing very much makeup. And I'll admit with this palette that there was a little bit of a learning curve for me with it. Um, the colors in here are very kind of bold, at least for me. I mean, I do have a very fair complexion, so darker colors like this do show up quite bold on me. And it took me a little while to figure out how to kind of combine these colors. The way it's set up, I mean, you can very easily, you know, do a purple look or a neutral look or kind of a green teal look. But I really like combining colors. I like putting kind of warm colors and cool colors together or colors that you might not expect to see together. I like putting those together. So it was kind of an experiment with me trying to figure out how to best use this palette with the way that I like to do makeup. Um, before I get into the looks that I did, I actually have six looks to share with you because the first look that I did I wasn't really all that happy with, so I wanted to keep kind of trying and figuring out this palette. Um, but there's two main issues that I have with it. Overall, I found the quality to be perfectly fine. I know a lot of people tend to talk very highly of the Lunar Beauty uh, formula, and I did enjoy it. I wish the metallics were maybe a little creamier and a little more like more metallic. That's just my preference, but they were fine. There was really only one dud or what I would consider a dud shade in this palette, and I'll get to that in just a minute. So the main thing that I found with this palette for me was that there wasn't really a good inner corner shadow. I really like having a light metallic in a palette. There, there was plenty of deep shades, so I was able to use these shades over here um, for deepening the outer corner. There was enough kind of transition shades. All of these shades here worked really well as a transition shade. Um, the metallics that there were, like these three here, were quite nice. Uh, this one is a little bit dark for me. I don't usually reach for kind of dark metallics for my lid, but it performed nicely. And then we have this one here. Technically, that is the lightest shade in this palette but it applies much darker than it looks. It looks brighter in the pan. It's more of a topper. It's kind of like a loose, loose kind of flaky shadow. So it does apply more like a topper. It works really nicely as a topper, but for an inner corner, it just didn't have the brightness that I liked. The other shade that I had a more difficult time with was this one here. And it's not because of how it performed, but it was just the tone of the color for my complexion. So. That shade of kind of lime chartreuse green 
on me looked like the color like when you have a bruise and the bruise is starting to heal so it goes from that like purple purpley blue shades to those kind of greeny yellow shades this color on me looks like that so if I used it in the wrong spot or if I used it like too much of it um, it could it could look kind of bruise like so I kind of had to figure out uh, the best way to incorporate that color into eye looks where it looked like I was using a green shadow versus having a bruise. What I would have really liked, um, now this shade here, this is the one that I wasn't very happy with the actual performance of, uh, especially since when you look at the layout of the overall palette, like you very clearly have like a purple row, a neutral row, and a green row. I really wish that ha this had been a pale green. So some sort of pale metallic green that could have worked as an inner corner shade um, would have complemented this row really well, but also would have been kind of a contrast with these shades. That's what I wish this had been. Um, and you know what? If this shade itself performed nicely, I'd probably just be like, okay, that's fine. I'll dip into something else. Or this is where that um, that silver metallic NYX eyeliner came in really handy. I used that as an inner corner. But this shade here just doesn't work very well. Um, it's kind of a topper shade. And it just doesn't have a lot, it doesn't do much. Like it's just, it's kind of sheer. It has a little bit of glitter in it. There was one look where I tried to use it as a topper because I do like topper shades, but I like when they're kind of creamy and they just, they, you can kind of pat them on a look and they really add some dimension to a look. This didn't add any dimension, you could barely see it. So before I get into the actual looks, I'm just going to mention here, I'm thinking of taking this shade out. You know that this is something that I will do with palettes if there's a color that just doesn't work for me and I know I am not going to reach for a shade. Um, I had kind of considered, you know, this is a gift, it was a gift for my husband, do I really want to kind of mess with the palette? But you know, it's my makeup. It's it's something. It's an item that I'm gonna I'm gonna be the only one using it. It's something that you know makes me happy when I use it. So I want it to work the way that I like to do my makeup. And so I think I am going to pull this one out. And I found the perfect shade to replace it with. Uh, if you remember the video with the drugstore haul that I did, my summer haul. So I had all these things that I'd kind of picked up over the summer. One of them was an order from NYX and I picked up some of their single shadows. And I have this one here. This one is in the shade Mermaid. And I think this complements this palette beautifully and once I kind of figured that out I think there's actually one or two looks um, where I kind of started bringing this in and it just worked so well with these other colors it works really well with these green shades um, when I layer it over the purple shades it totally transforms them it looks really nice with these neutral shades so I think what I'm going to do is take this um, dig this I'm going to dig this out and then dig this out and kind of put it in there and just kind of press it in there uh, so that I, I can use this shade instead of um, this one, which I really don't like all that much. And then I think, yeah, this will be an all-in-one palette for me, which is how I really prefer to do my makeup. So now that I have that out of the way, like I said, I did mention earlier, if you want to see swatches of this palette, please do go see the previous video. But now we are going to get into the looks that I created. So as usual, I will be posting the pictures on the left side of the screen there. So let's start off with the first look. So this is the one that I wasn't happy with, um, but really what I was trying to do is test, you know, how well the different shades from the different rows kind of blended, blended together. I really do like layering shadows, I like combining kind of contrast colors, and I wanted to see how well I could do that with these colors because I mean I do know that um, they are kind of opposite to each other and you do run the risk of things getting muddy when you do that so I was just kind of testing the waters with this look I think it comes across better in the photo than it did in real life 
but I think it just it just looked kind of muddy and overall I wasn't happy with it. Um, I was almost tempted to wash it off and try something else, but I just don't tend to do that, especially on days where I'm not going out and nobody's going to see me anyway. So I just left it and that's what it was. It was just a learning experience. So for this look, what I did is I went into this shade here for my transition shade. I used this shade here to deepen the outer corner. I used this shade here all over my lid. I used this shade as a topper in the center of my lid and then I went in with this shade here for my inner corner and you can kind of see where I've used that uh, silver metallic eye pencil just to kind of brighten the inner corner because there wasn't really a bright inner corner shade in this palette. So I think this second look here turned out um, quite a bit better and what I started to figure out with this palette is that it's best to kind of stick to one color family. So you know pick one of the rows that you want to work with and then add accent colors from another row if you want but don't try and like mix all the rows together basically which makes sense. So for this one here again I went into this shade for my transition shade. I used this shade here um, just above that to build up a little bit of color. I used this shade here to deepen my outer corner. I used this shade here all over my lid and then I topped it with this shade here. And then again I used this green um, in my inner corner and topped it with the metallic silver pencil. So here we have the third look and I really like how this one turned out. So for this one I wanted to start playing with more of the warmer toned mattes. So I went into this shade here for my transition and I deepened the outer corner with this shade here. I went all over the lid with this shade here. I put this shade on the very center of my lid and then for my lower lash line I used this shade here and kind of topped it with this shade here. This is the look where I tried to use this shade, the one that I wasn't happy with, and you can kind of see in my transition area going up towards my brown bone, there is a little bit of sparkle there. That is from that shade, but it just didn't have nearly the amount of impact that I would want from a shade like that. This was also the look that I was able to use the teal mascara, so I put the teal mascara on my uh, lower lashes just to kind of further emphasize the um, teal shadows that I used on my lower lash line. Now on to the fourth look and I really like how this one turned out. I wanted to kind of combine the um, some of the brown shades with some of the purple shades. So I started off with this shade here as my transition. I used this shade here to deepen the outer corner. I went all over the lid with this shade here. I topped the center of the lid with this shade here. And then I used this shade here for the inner corner. And again, went over that with the metallic silver pencil. For the fifth look, I wanted to concentrate on more of the purple shades. And then I also wanted to use this shade here since I hadn't yet used it. And when I'm doing these challenges, I really do like to try and use every shade in the palette. So for this look here, I started off with this shade for the transition. I built it up further with this shade here into the outer corner just to add a little bit of depth. I went all over the lid with this shade here. I topped it with this shade here. I put this shade on the very center of the lid. And then this is the look where I started using that mermaid shadow and you can see that in my inner corner and I think it's just it's the exact kind of brightness that I like for my inner corner and I think that kind of greenish you know teal color really complemented the other shades and then here we have the final look so this was my sixth look and again I was I really enjoyed this one so after that first look and I kind of figured out how to mix these colors together I think each look afterwards I really liked more and more. So for this one I wanted to combine the neutral row with the green row. So I started off with this shade here as my transition. I used this shade here for my inner corner. I went all over the lid with this shade here. 
I topped the lid with this shade here and then I went into that mermaid shadow um, and you can see I kind of layered that over the inner portion of my lid as well as the inner corner. I do believe actually I also used this shade here. You can see it, that I kind of built it up on that upper transition area going towards my brow bone. It looks a little bit more yellow there. That is where I layered that kind of chartreuse color. I'm also wearing the Shine Bite SD lipstick in this picture so you can see how it looks with kind of that sheer warm brown with a bit of a reflect. So overall I really did enjoy playing with this palette and playing with the color story. It's something very different in my collection. I don't really have a mix of colors quite like this. Um, if you have this palette, hopefully that gave you some inspiration of some things to try with it. Um, I would love to know if you had a favorite look of the ones that I created. And yeah, I look forward to using this again. Hopefully I'll be able to kind of cycle this palette in at least one more time um, before you know fall is over because I really did enjoy it. So next, we are going to go into the, the next five products that I am going to cycle in. So here are the next group of products that I want to get some use out of. As usual, I'm going to start with these guys over here, and then we'll talk about the palette. So first off, we have this primer from Cover FX. It is a blurring primer. These are the primers that I really enjoy. I find if I find one that uh, works really well for me, I often don't have to use any kind of base product. This is enough to just kind of even out my skin and just make it look really smooth. So as you can see, I've got some pretty good use out of this. I received this in a BoxyCharm about two years ago which is why I want to get some good use out of this. So it's kind of one of the oldest primers in my collection, and I think the shelf life is like 12 months or something, so it's well beyond that, but it's still performing really nicely. Um, but I just, I would really like to get this used up and out. So here it is on my hand. You can see there is a tint to it. It is a thicker consistency, um, but that tint really blends out. You can't detect it on my face once it is blended in, and I find it just gives my skin a really smooth appearance, especially on my forehead where I have forehead wrinkles, and it just really visually blurs that area because I don't like using foundation there because it tends to settle in. So this is a product that should be very easy to use every time I use my makeup, so I should be able to get some really good use out of this. So the next products I'm going to talk about are these two eyeliners. I normally don't have two eyeliners in a cycle, but I do like to have a colored one, and that's where this one here comes in. And then this one is kind of an everyday eyeliner. So let's start with this one. This is the ColourPop, this is a ColourPop gel liner in the color Dirty Talk, and it is just a really nice metallic gold. I think it will go really well with this palette, so I should be able to reach for this almost every time I do my makeup. The other liner is this one from Tarte, and on one end you have kind of a gel liner, and on the other end you have a liquid liner. So I think this should be really easy to use as well because I can definitely use the um, gel liner end for my t to do a tight line every time I do my makeup, and then I can use the, um, the liquid liner part when I want to add a little bit of wing or just add, you know, a little bit of depth on my upper lash line. So this should also be really easy to use. Next we have these two lip products. So this is the one that I just mentioned as something being very similar to the Shine by SD lipstick in kind of the, the color of it, kind of, and the effect of it. It is a gloss, so the finish is obviously very different. And then this is a lipstick. Um, I actually mentioned this lipstick in the video that I did on makeup that I cannot wait to use this fall. Um, and this is a bright orange. So this is going to be my bonus bright for this round where I just want to use it one time. And then this I'm hoping to use five times. So here you can see them swatched out. Uh, the lip gloss can sheer out really nicely, even more sheer than this. So I think it's going to be a good one to choose if I want a more dramatic lip. Um, I can layer it up a little bit if I want to sheer it out for something every day. I can do that. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick up that kind of color shift that uh, you can see in the tube, but it does come across more on the lips. And then this here is the, um, the lipstick in 21 Questions. It's one of their blurred formulas, so it just gives a really nice satin matte look. 
And then finally, we have the eyeshadow palette. So this is the Good Sport palette from ColourPop. This is another item I mentioned in that video of makeup. I cannot wait to use this fall. I think this is just a perfect fall color palette. I think it's a shame that they've discontinued this. This is one of their more unique palettes that they've put out. Um, but yeah, I can't, I can't wait to use this. I used this one or two times last fall and then haven't really touched it. Um, I'm, go I'm gonna make a confession here. Um, in my last video, I mentioned that I had been sick this past week and so I wasn't really able to do much recording. But I was still doing my makeup and I have started to use this palette already. And spoiler, I'm really enjoying it. So I might have more than five looks to share with you um, with the wrap up for this round. Let me know if you wanna see all of them like I can maybe only talk about my favorite five but let me know if you want to see all the looks anyway but yeah I've been playing with this already and I really enjoy it so here are the swatches and I think this like I said this color story is just it's beautifully curated I think I would make only one change so far and I'll talk about that when um, I do the kind of the wrap-up video but otherwise these shades perform really well and just work really well together I have been looking through my collection to see if I can find um, singles that are similar to these shades so if there's any one that catches your eye that you'd really like to know if there's a similar color available somewhere let me know and I'll see if I can find um, in my collection something that would be very close but yeah this is the colors all swatched out and I just I just think this is a beautiful color story for fall. So there are the products that I will be using for this next round. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know one product from your own stash that you have been loving lately. But as always, I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you in the next one.